All right. Welcome back to the Super Metroid 30 Years of Speed Showcase. Next up, we've got an Open Doors 138% run by Kazentin. I am your commentator, Idol. And this is actually a half hack of the game. So uh, it's not quite the vanilla game. We've uh, tweaked it a little bit, as you may have guessed. As we can see here as we fall down series, there are no doors. We're all. <laughs> All removed. Uh, now, if I tell you that this was Shiny Zenny's idea, I think that comes to the surprise of absolutely no one. As we all know Zenny really doesn't like bonking into those doors so much, but it's really a lot more than just not having to bonk into the doors. I mean, if you think about all the different like red doors, green doors, yellow doors, just removing the doors by itself opens up some different routing options for the game. And we've actually gone a little bit further than that. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, first, I want to Look at this, uh, check out this uh, series escape here. The red leaf scene is the same as you would see in vanilla, except for you do need to make sure not to leave the room early. Uh, that could, you would have to reset the entire uh, red leaf sequence there. Uh, I did get that nice 5988, a little bit better than you can do in the uh, vanilla game. <laughs> 5835 here, we don't even have to have super crisp arm pumping to get these nice uh, times. Um, it's actually possible even to leave that first room with one minute uh, flat on the timer if you're a little bit more precise, but that's pretty risky because then you might, <laughs> like I said, leave the room a little bit earlier. All right, nice serious time there. And so some of the other changes we've made in the uh, in this little half hack, we've gotten rid of the gates, like the green gates, blue gates. We've also made a lot of the different blocks shootable. So whether it's uh, bomb blocks, speed blocks, crumble blocks, uh, those are all shootable. Uh, so it kind of opens up different pathways. Like if you wanted to go an LN through the back door, you just shoot the crumble block and roll through. Um, and that also kind of opens up a new category opportunity. And so that's where we get into this open door is 138%. I'm in the vanilla game, it's only 135 or maybe 136%. But here we can actually go for the whole full 138%. I'm going to explain what that is. Um, a little bit later in the run as well. There's just so much more to go over in the beginning. Like normally this is kind of the, okay, every first five minutes is the same. You fall down the uh, climb shaft. and But here we see the uh, enemies are already awake. Uh, the Zebbies is awake immediately in this, in this hack, um, which allows us to see a nice here climb fall with the enemies present. We can shoot those enemies right on the way down. Very satisfying. And then we have the pit room. This is normally the first room with enemies. And when you kill the enemies, those gray doors unlock, become flashing doors. And it's actually opening those flashing doors that makes Zebby's planet wake up. Of course, there are no doors. So to avoid any problems there, we just planets open, uh, planets awake right from the beginning. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and collect our morph ball and then these uh, power bomb blocks are now shootable blocks, so we might as well head this direction. We need to get our charge beam next. Um, now, in this category, we're not allowed to get uh, this power bomb pack just yet, so we got to jump over it. That does mean we're going to take a hit here. This is a little bit scary, uh, but as long as we take only one hit, we're good. And then we can proceed on to charge beam. Uh, so in Super Metroid, you'll often hear, especially in randomizers, you'll hear talk about major items and minor items. That just means major items are the unique items. Morph Ball, Charge Beam, Faria Suit. We're allowed to get all of those right now. And then there's the more common items, like this missile pack up here. We're not allowed to get that in this part of the run. Uh, so that's why we're collecting some items and skipping others. Now this next room, Green Hill Zone, is actually one of the scariest rooms in the run because we're just so low on health here. As you can see, uh, Kai, go ahead and picking up a little bit of health there. Also taking a little bit slower, but getting, uh, killing these enemies instead of taking uh, them taking 20 hit HP off us, we're collecting 20 HP from them, so that's very helpful. And if we weren't at full health, we can get a little bit more health from these cactex as well, because uh, they're not going to drop supers. We do not have super missiles. And then we're going to head down. Uh, this is a crate first category. Um, you have to keep in mind that the moat uh, we can't do a CWJ or an HPJ over the moat because there's a missile pack sitting on the moat. We can't pick up that missile pack yet. Uh, we could do a diagonal bomb jump up, but we don't even have bombs. You have to go out of our way to go pick up those bombs. 
And next we've got Spazer. Um, now this might be a, kind of a surprise for those of you familiar with the GT category. So GT is the Golden Trezo code. Um, so that is a little debug code that the developers left in the game. When you enter Golden Trezo's room and you're holding oh, just the face buttons, only the face buttons, so A, B, X, Y, the game will give you um, a bunch of health, missiles, supers, and you know, power bombs and stuff, and every single major item in the game except Screw Attack, with Screw Attack conveniently right next door. So you, you could tell it was there for testing the game. And so you might be thinking, okay, if we're going to get Spazer later, why would we pick it up now? And the answer is, we, we want it for Kraid. Because we didn't need super blocks to get into Kraid. We didn't need missiles. So how are we going to beat Kraid? I mean, if we came here with just a charge beam, that only does 50 damage. Uh, Kraid's got 1,000 health. That's 20 hits on Kraid with that spacer beam. Uh, we're able, oh, ni nice uh, damaging through there, by the way. I should have comment on that. Uh, purposely taking a hit, those spike hits from mini Kraid, so we just run right through mini Kraid. Otherwise, I believe mini Kraid does 100 damage, so we would definitely want the iframes for that uh, move. So with the spacer beam, we only need nine charge shots to beat Kraid. We'll see here. Very nice getting two in the first phase of the fight. That's what you want. You can optimally get two in every uh, phase, although this first time Kraid opens his mouth is completely RNG based, so it can be, um, that's pretty good. Just landing one shot's very good. Um, and then the problem with being super aggressive and trying to land two charge shots every time Kraid opens his mouth is that you tend to lose sight of your own health if you do that. And, uh, especially for a showcase, that would not be a good idea. So, gonna get those charge shots in while maintaining your health. And we need to make sure we don't leave this room too quickly. We do have plenty of health. We need to make sure that the health drops up here. Uh, otherwise, the game will not count Kraid as dead, and that'd be especially bad uh, since we would come back into the room behind Kraid and probably die. You really don't want to leave early. All right. Next up, we're going to... So I mentioned we want to get to Golden Tree, so that's the goal. Um, now, theoretically, you can... Well, not even theoretically. It is possible to get to Golden Tree, so with just Varia and High Jump with a zero tank lava dive. It is incredibly precise. It's uh, not something that would be very showcase uh, friendly and nobody running open doors. Um... Nobody running uh, open doors uh, that has done that so far. Um, so we're not going to be doing that. So in that case, if we're not going to do the uh, the zero tank lava dive, we need to get speed boosters. We need over the boat in order to get speed booster, or so we need to get gravity. We need gravity for the gravity jump. In order to get gravity, we need speed booster to get over the boat. Sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit there. And we're also going to pick up high jump as well. I don't know if high jump is strictly necessary, but it makes everything significantly easier. It's, there's a decent chance it's just faster to do high jump. I'm sorry, I just got a question. Um, can you skip Kraid? Can you get past Kraid? I'm not sure that you can. I think that Kraid, like himself, kind of puts up a wall. Uh, but even if you could, I mean, we need to kill Kraid at some point anyway to get credit. Um, there are a few, they're not doors, but there are a few barriers still left in the game. G4 is one of them. You can't just run to G4 and have G4 be open already. So we are going to have to take out all four boxes. And then next year, um, I really like this strat. This is something that Kai came up with. Uh, we're going to go for the early speedway. Thank you, Kai, for taking the save here. This is dangerous. You can't just run out the run out if this trick fails, but... Um, because we can shoot through these speed blocks, we can go through here. However, we need to watch out for these speed tops. Oh, we got one. Okay, so we got to leave. We don't have any way of killing these speed tops. Um, you can shake them off, as you saw <laughs> that one shake off there, but they just do so much uh, damage that it's not worth it. So uh, Kai's going to go ahead and abandon that and go through the normal normal way here. But there is a setup if you do that mock ball at a specific point, entry that room. Um, it is RNG based, but. The RNG resets on certain rooms, including rooms with VTOMs. So it works out that there is a normalized setup for that uh, to get those first four VTOMs to all miss, jump over you. 
But no worries, we'll go this way. Make our way to the Bubble Mountain. We get that speed booster, and then we'll be able to cross over the moat. And after a speed booster, we're going to have another little point of divergence, um, a, a choice, you could say, about what to get next. Because we could just go towards the moat now, but what we're going to see is, is Kaizenton pick up the wave beam as well. And again, you know, GT code, it gives you the wave beam when you enter that. So why are we getting the wave beam? We're getting it for Fantoon, because once again, no missiles, no supers. We have to kill Fantoon with charge shots. It's um, kind of a different fight than you're used to. We can't even do X Factors because those require power bombs as ammo, and we have no power bombs. So, with the Wave Beam, we can get the Fantoon fight down to just four rounds. With just charge and spacer, it takes six rounds to kill Fantoon, and it's a little bit, uh, you can't hit Fantoon off screen. You've got to get four shots in per round. With the extra damage from Wave, we can get, Fantoon actually runs away after three shots, so let me stick around for the shots. Here we have a nice little strat here. We can actually just go the bottom path for this uh, double chamber. That way we don't have to worry about picking up those missiles up top. So just kind of uh, showing off the fun options that there are in this open doors with the uh, blocks also being shootable. And it is faster to shoot the crumble blocks as well. So you, I mean, you can do a quick drop, but it's just, why not just shoot them? <laughs> it's even quicker drop. All right, so from here, we will make our way down to, oh yeah, we can shoot through there too. No need to do that bomb tunnel. We'll make our way up towards Fantoon. So another reason that we don't really consider going straight to gravity. Um, oh, I, I don't even think I mentioned that. If for those wondering, hey, the do open doors are open. Can you just go get gravity? Like if you could do that diagonal bomb jump for the moat, can you pick up gravity? The answer is no. You need to wake up the ship first, just like you would in vanilla. If you ever break into that room in vanilla, it is possible. Uh, but you haven't killed Fantoon. There's just no item there. Uh, so it's the same behavior in this open doors game as well. Uh, so uh, for this room, we're going to do a jump here. We're not going to go for the... Uh, we're not going to go for the Alpha Spark, partly because you just keep sparking. You know, the, the doors are open and you just go into this next room and you just burn most of your health. Uh, so it's not that helpful to do. And then we have the traditional Red Tower climb. Like, taking advantage of that Wave Beam. Now, the Wave Beam does save a little bit of time for Ruma too. You do have to watch out, as you can see, shooting these platforms uh, can make it interesting. Oh! Uh-oh. Shot too many platforms. <laughs> Oh, well. I'm not sure if that shot's going to work. We'll find out. Yeah, that was just a little bit too late, I think. All right. Oh. This room can be a troll. No power bombs or supers to help us out here either, but... Kai can handle this. This is just a showcase. Showcase shenanigans, I think, here. But even if we, so even if we went up here first without going down and getting Spazer and Wave and all that stuff, and we used the bomb, we collected the bombs, which are out of the way, and we bombed, we did the diagonal bomb jump over the moat, somehow have to beat Fantoon with just the power suit, 99 health, and a charge beam for 50 shots required on Fantoon. That would just be uh, absolutely miserable. Um, yeah, no save. This fight's not too dangerous if we're not aggressive. So uh, Kai is not planning to be too aggressive. Um, here's everybody's, uh, here's every early speedrunner's favorite strat. The, uh, oh, nope, that, that really was, that really was every uh, beginner's uh, strat there. The uh, 
failed spark. But next we're going to have the uh, bonk spark, everybody's favorite uh, way to get over the moat, I'm sure. We need to make sure we don't collect that missile pack. And we also don't really want to spark into the room. We want to keep the server healthier. And we also want to do this jump here. This, these jumps are a little bit tight. Uh, because we've got high jump and speed, and you're not really supposed to. You're supposed to be using grapple. Ooh, doing that precise one there, too. You can actually jump over one of those platforms there at the end and make that last jump a little bit easier. I think it is faster to do what uh, Kai just did there. So for the fancy fight, um, the good news is the flames, they can't drop missiles. So they're going to drop health for us, generally, especially the uh, the ring of eight flames when uh, fancy opens the eye. The problem is, normally you would fire a shot, and then you'd quickly follow it up with missiles to keep Fantoon on screen. We can't. We don't have that option, and it takes a whole second to charge a charge shot to land on the eye. What you can do is do a pseudo screw, and then use that to kind of jump through the flames and kind of dance around the flames, and then land a shot on Fantoon without clearing the flames out. So we might see that here in this first round. Especially now that it is a uh, slow pattern, we know when he's going to open the eye. Okay, something like that, uh, but we, we missed the shot that time. But that was the general idea, is that you do that pseudo screw to get the flames out of the way, or to dance around the flames, and then um, land the shots. And then just three shots allow fans to respawn. So here we are, our health is a little bit lower, so we're definitely not going to do that. Uh, with the slower health. Unfortunately, this is kind of 36 health. This is one of the not so great places to be. If we were below 30 health, we'd be getting uh, health bombed and we'd be getting a lot more health drops. I still think uh, Kaizen Tune's going to be okay. This fight's not going the greatest. It's making me nervous now. Okay, that'll help a little bit. And then we could see the effect of being in health bomb range already with all the extra drops we got as a result of that. Already almost back in the health. So it makes it makes a big difference being in health bomb range uh, for this fight. Oh, almost. I think that was probably a mid despawn. If that had been a slow despawn, we would have seen that land. And this is another reason to get that wave beam. If uh, that had been spacer shots, Fantoon would not have despawned there. And, um, you know, then it would have been a little dangerous. You know, he probably would have taken another hit having Fantoon run into this. All right, and that ends the fight. <laughs> One thing I didn't even mention, you, you don't want to, like, do a damage boost and accidentally fly out of the room or something in the middle of the fight. We, we definitely do not want to leave this fight early. You can leave just a hair early, but then you don't get any health drops. But it's like really tight. You gotta leave like within like a few frames of those drops appearing, or else the game is not gonna count that fight. And then we enter the uh, worst room of the game in this category. Uh, let's see if we can get this this shot here. Ooh, that's close. Is it gonna get those blocks there? Yes, very nicely done. Taking advantage of wave beams kind of in and out hitboxes to hit those upper shot blocks without hitting the lower shot blocks. Um, if you don't do that, if you accidentally hit the blocks out, then you have to turn off speed high jumper. It's, it's, it, you either have to, or it's almost impossible to. It's a little bit of a tricky jump here, but we get it just fine. And we finally get our gravity suit. Uh, yes, that is correct. If you, yeah, the beeping's at 30 and the actual bomb's at 29. This game, <laughs> Um, it is. It, I did tweak the health bomb, the, the health alarm logic to try to be a little bit smarter. Although I have noticed that the health alarm turns off when you collect an item, which is not supposed to happen. So a little bit of tweak, a little bit more tweaking needed. But the health alarm should be uh, quote unquote fixed in this ROM hack, this half hack. And then we're going to head down to GT. We actually have a choice of routes. We think that going down Meridia is just a touch faster. It's close. You might be able to prove the other route is almost as fast, but it's certainly a lot more convenient to go down Meridia. And we could even do some Moonfalls.
nice mock ball into here too. Oh, miss that move ball there. Not a big deal. We can get one of these ones up here. Or not. Or just fall down. It's still probably faster than taking that red tower out. And we don't have power bombs for the tube, but we don't need them. Um, because if you're coming from this direction, this is something that a lot of randomizer players already know. You can actually do a little mock ball, right? Like slow morph there. That was very fast. Nicely done. Just clip right to that tube as if it's not there. All right, so the GT code. When we get down, we um, when we get down there, we hit our face buttons. We're gonna get uh, we're gonna get 700 health, 300 in reserves. We're gonna get 100 missiles, 20 supers, 20 power bombs. Every item in the game, we actually have to turn off spacer because we have spacer and plasma at the same time. And we just have to pick up screw attack. And since we've been skipping all of these minor items as we've been playing. Those will all still be there. All those missile packs, all those supers and power bombs. And that's what allows us to get over 100%. And we can get precisely to 138%. Because the GT code gave us a bunch of stuff, but it also left the stuff in the game. Uh, yeah, the percentage is just calculated by... Uh, Oh uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, first, let's let's check out this gravity jump here. So we're going to start our jump with the gravity suit just before we pause. We jumped, and then when we take off the pause, we no longer have the gravity suit on. So without the gravity suit, you have these floaty physics. Your acceleration is a third of what it would normally be. I think Kaizen Two is supposed to save there. You gonna save Kai? I don't know if he's listening. I need to put in the IFB thing. Oh, that's not, I'm, not, I'm in the wrong channel for that. But Oh, uh, Kai did turn gravity back on, though. Okay, that makes me feel a little better. Uh, we do have to be kind of careful here. Normally, you'd bomb this out. Uh, but there we go. we got to avoid these um, items here. So when the game calculates percentage at the very end, it goes off of the, uh, the number of missiles, number of power bombs, number of... It goes off the count of miners you have. For the major items, it just goes off of what you have uh, collected, whether you have it or not. And we do see here, um, turning off a couple other items too. Also turning off Ice Beam, um, that, it's hard to say whether that's slower or not. Normally that would be slower, just because you have the Ridley fight and you have Mother Brain. But in this category, because we don't really need supers that much, um, it might not be that much slower. It might even be faster, depending on the strats that you do. And then we're collecting these items. You can see the, we're, we're finally just now getting the missile and the super icons as well. Uh, those didn't show up when we entered the code. And here's our screw attack. Poor, poor golden tree. So he finally gets to jump around. You know, normally the speedrunners have him locked in a corner. In this round, we can see him jumping around, but then we just leave. And then using that screw attack through this. This is kind of like the screw attack tutorial room of the vanilla game. One of the things that the vanilla game really does well is they just put these little tutorial rooms here. Here's screw attack. And here's this wall. How do I get past it? I'll use the screw attack. Here's these enemies that I can't shoot with my charge beam. What do I do? Screw attack. It's really, really nicely done. 30 years later, you're still, still a master class in how to do tutorials. And we can also use the screw attack to, sh to uh, make our way up this way as well. So that's one of the more recent additions in the Open Doors hack. Been a few tweaks uh, since it was first released. And one of them is making the screw attack more powerful. We just feel like if we're going to be able to shoot out all these different blocks, we might as well as screw attack through them too. I think from a casual playthrough, that would just make more sense. Speedrunners don't really need that. We could have just shot out all those blocks that Kai flew through. But hey, it's in the game. We're going to use it. It's nice being able to plow through that stuff with the screw attack. All right, and then this room is fairly similar to vanilla. We can shoot out these blocks here, save a little time. And of course, we don't need to lay a power bomb here because we don't need to open this door. Like <laughs> a screw attack. Yeah, I, from a speedrunning perspective, I don't think screw attack needs to be powerful. But I, I thought for casual play, it just. It'd just be kind of weird, especially if you're trying to do things like go up Gauntlet. 
uh, if you can imagine going up to the missiles or going up that direction, it'd be kind of tricky. It was kind of tricky with just being able to shoot out the blocks, but with screw attack, it's now uh, is another way of doing that. All right, and then we hear towards the middle pirates. We can do our usual um, run through the pirates and charge up a spark strat. Or not. We can just fly through. <laughs> I actually like to charge a uh, Shine Spark there. But I don't think that Kai usually does. So uh, what are the other items? Are you talking about the GT code? Um, the GT code gave us 100 missiles. Oh, and Kai going to show off here. We can get this E-Tank ahead of time. You know, if you wanted to run open doors with RBO, you, you have that option. You can also just leave the fight if it's not going well and form back up. But then you got to restart the fight. Uh, so it gave us 100 missiles, 20 supers, 20 power bombs. Oh, yeah, the additional 3%. So in a vanilla GT max run, you have to collect one missile pack, one super, and one power bomb. So that's what gets you the 135% in vanilla versus 138% in open doors, as we didn't collect any of those items in the early game. And it also really does make the category a little bit different. We talked about that crate fight in the GT Max category in the vanilla game. The crate fight's just a crate fight. You don't even get spacer. And the uh, fan two fight, the fan two fight is a little more interesting because you have low ammo, but it's not like it is in open doors. Um, so one thing you might have noticed here is that Kai was not uh, shy about using those super missiles. Uh, not worried about saving the super missiles for later because you just don't really need them. Um, it might be nice to get one here. I like having one for the uh, Fune, I believe it is, the enemy in the fire fleas room. And that's pretty much the only super we're going to need for a while because we just we don't have doors to open. We don't. Um, you know, any room that would have enemies that we have to kill, like Batwoon, we don't need to see Batwoon. The doors are open. We'll just take the back door. So, a lot of different options. Yeah, the GT code doesn't update any of the HUD. That's why, like, even Power Bombs was blank until we got those uh, quote unquote Power Bombs machine. Uh, the Power Bombs that were in this room just a minute or two ago. And yeah, we don't, um, we'll never see the grapple icons or x ray icons unless we have to reload for the save. But they, we do have those items. I'm not going to see much of Grapple at all in this run, really, because even one of the utilities of Grapple being able to open doors faster, not really something we need to worry about in this particular run. All right, one of the only super missiles we'll need. We even get one back for free. We don't need it. I believe we'll end up with 2100 energy, so the, more than even the HUD can show, and that's fine. Those, the HUD will show 14 tanks at some point, but we'll have more than 14. And then for this little cleanup, you know, we're used to seeing the uh, the Hoda Ruby special, uh, but we can actually just go this way. Shoot out these blocks, get this power bomb over here, and we can actually do the spring ball maze in reverse. Uh, it is unfortunately not that much better in reverse. It's still kind of annoying. I still usually lay a power bomb here. Not bad. That's that's better than what I would usually do with my Kai there. And we can carry on our way. Just these blocks, these blocks. Yeah, you can see, uh, Kai shout out some blocks there. You can kind of see the, the animation from those blocks being broken up. Just blocks you don't even know you can break because you just never break them in, <laughs> in a trouble speed around there. Just shoot right through them. Screw attack up to these crumble blocks, screw attack down to the crumble blocks. <laughs> yeah, that's how the GT code works. You go from having nothing to having everything. Um, I believe we're going to see a GT Classic run later uh, in the showcase where you don't collect every item afterwards. You just get the code and you get out. 
and you don't have these restrictions on which items you get ahead of time, so you can go ahead and pick up some missile packs and stuff. All right, so now we just got to clean up everything that we uh, couldn't get the first time we were here. Couldn't get those missiles in wave. We're going to have to get the speed missiles. There is a neat little strat um, coming up for the speed missiles. You can do, you can charge up a spark and then do an angle down jump or a spin jump to get this missile pack and then turn around and spark back up speed. We actually see that in the vanilla game as well. Ooh, this is not good for setting up for that. I don't know if we're going to run out of time. We might run out of time. We'll see. Yeah. Not, not where you want to fall to do that strat. That's okay. In, in that case, it is faster to just go back into this room and make sure all these crumble blocks come back to us. Uh, people are running, wondering, speed, speed booster does break through shot blocks, but it doesn't break through. Uh, it only does so horizontally. Um, if you if it broke through vertically, you'd probably just fall down all of those all those little crevices we just ran over in speed hallway. So, uh, quite everything is OP in this game for for good reason. Uh, the question was asked: Does this game have zebetites? Yes, it does. Uh, those are still there, and that is one of the better uses for ammo. Uh, that's usually where I burn a fair amount of my ammo in this run. Uh, you don't have to; you can do the zeb skip, but. Um, in this case, we actually have ice beam turned off already, so we're probably just going to ammo through those zipotites. And I don't believe it's even that much slower to do so. I suppose. They're not really, like, a gate. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, that, there are some things, this is just like that, should the zipotites be rude or not, that uh, I'd be willing to entertain. This this hat this hack is not this is probably not the final one of it. Um, I'd like to add a few Easter eggs at some point, kind of emphasize the cross room strats. Maybe make uh, a few rooms a little bit easier to have those multi room shine sparks for. In fact, uh, I want to give a quick shout out to the hacking community in general. Um, you know, there this is not the only hack by far. There's uh, many of you probably have heard of rotation. But there's also like Mirtroid and. Uh, up, try down, and um, other, there's there's several hacks in that then that genre. I think there's like the unhundred hack, and then there are plenty of just full-on complete game hacks. Um, Super Metroid Engine, but just totally reimagined. Um, really great stuff out there on the Metroid uh, construction community. So it's definitely uh, something if you're not familiar with it, uh, we're checking out. All right, so we gotta get, we have to get that uh, cathedral missile pack, and then we also gotta get crumple shaft missiles. So a few awkwardly placed missiles we have to get to. We kind of choose to do it in this order. Unclear if it's the fastest. Oh, and Kai is actually coming down here and getting high jump. Oh, this might be a different. This is a different order than I usually do. I I would prefer to go to the crumple missiles, um, but I think this can work too. And it, it does go to show. Uh, it's hard to say which is fastest. Um, for some of these routing decisions, you probably make either way work. I just don't like falling down crumble shaft when I'm trying to climb up it, so that's my motivation for not going this direction. So we can see that uh, Kai is going to just pick up these missiles because we can. There's no gate to get out of the way. And I believe next we are going to see Croc. Um, so while we've removed a lot of the gates and blocks and stuff uh, by making them shootable, anything that's like a cutscene is generally unchanged. So with Croc, there's that wall to the left of us. That's still there. That's nicely done. Can we get to that E-Tank fast enough? Uh, not quite. That's okay. This, this mechanic from Vanilla is still here, where you're not really going out of bounds. You're being pushed back to the left of the screen, but you're pushing back camera and the camera doesn't really know how to do with that so that's why you have that weird effect of samus going off the right side of the screen and showing up off on the left that's just a camera effect and then we got to wait out for this wall here 
I'm not sure. I don't. The camera is locked, so even when this wall breaks, you can't escape to the left, which is probably a good thing because it's. I believe it's pretty ugly if you try to come into this room from the left. If Croc is still alive, the the game is not uh, configured for that. Uh, likewise, trying to fight Mother Brain from the other side is not supported. That's not that's not something you can do uh, in this hack. It would be a fair amount of work to support that. All right, and then we got our standard croc cleanup here. It's not too different. Can still do that super deboost thing if we get here in time, but I think uh, not getting that move all kind of messed things up there. No problem. We do get to shoot out these blocks at least. Don't have to lay a power bomb. I don't. There's like hardly any power bomb slate in this run. It's just hardly ever a reason that you need to lay the power bomb. Do you have to be careful when jumping to these uh, down to up doors so you don't fall right back to the door? It's a very easy thing to do, especially because uh, muscle memory in the vanilla game, you often want to land on those doors to do another jump. But uh, there's those doors are not there to land on, so got to be careful. Oh, nice. Getting both deep boosts here. I like to see that in this room. Shine spark up. Oh, yeah. It, 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 if you run this, cat, I, it, regardless of which category you pick, you're going to do it at least once, if not like three times. Uh, just throughout the run until you've uh, gotten used to doing it enough. This is another one. This this uh, These blocks are breakable. Um, all right, so yeah, Kai's going to choose to go this direction. I think it's a little bit awkward. I think he was trying not to shoot out those blocks. And then we got to go up this crumble shaft. And and these platforms are shootable out too. Um, so screw attack currently does not break open these item blocks. It would be nice if it did. It probably will happen in a future update. Uh, but for now, you do have to shoot. It's one of the few things that screw attack can't do. You have to shoot those blocks before you can pick them up. And then we are done with Upper Norfair. We just have to do, we don't have to worry about these gates being in our way. You know, they're, and we just have to pick up the couple items in Crade. And then it's off to Meridia. That was nice. That was, that was very fast. Protecting right through that little gap there. That's actually one of my favorite rooms to uh, accidentally go back to the door. Here's another uh, place you might use a power bomb. Don't need to. Just shoot all this stuff out. If you're Zenny, you do that fancy uh, four tap uh, mock ball here, speed ball here. That's not an easy trick. Kai's going to do the uh, more traditional, just shoot the block out. Well, I guess that's not really traditional either, but you get the point. All right, so for Meridia, Meridia's another one of those places, there's probably multiple ways to do it. Um, all three of us that have run this category that I know of do it the same way, but I'm not convinced it's the fastest way. We're actually going to rush Dragon first. And to do that, we're going to take the back door. Um, of course, we don't want to fight Batuun. Batuun will almost certainly be slower, but it's just a question of like, do you do this now? Do you do some cleanup first and then go to Dragon? It's hard to say. Uh, you still have those sand pits. Um, you can't actually go up the sand pits. Uh, the sand pits are still sand pits. All right, but we can head right here and uh, fly through this uh, next room here. Even carry our space jump through. It's a little tight. This might work. Nice. the vertical tube here and then we're gonna head to the butterfly room I don't know why it's called that but it is uh, normally this would be a gray door here on the other side of the room 
but obviously there are no doors, so no need to take on Batum today. And we'll head right on through Cat Alley. No need to really farm supers unless they're just right there in the way. Don't really need supers. Uh, so for those don't, not familiar with the uh, the Dragon fight in this category, this is going to be similar to any other GT category where you actually have Plasma before you defeat a Dragon. And not only do we have Plasma, we have Charge and we have X-Ray to go with it. And that is going to give us these microwave beam combination. So how microwave beam works is it we take advantage of X-Ray to burn time. So normally you fire a plasma beam shot, charge plasma beam shot, hits Dragon, and then Dragon is going to have some iframes. And so he, you might be able to hit him twice with one shot, but you're not going to get more than two hits in. But with the X-Ray, we activate the X-Ray beam. That stops time for however long you're holding the X-Ray, let's say 15 frames or so, 20 frames. But Dragon's iframe counter continues to count down. And this allows us to land another hit on Dragon almost right away. And then we repeat the same process uh, seven times, maybe eight because we don't have Ice Beam. And then we get the kill. Now, you can't see it right now, but I'm pretty sure Kai has X-Ray selected. Yep. You do have to have a few frames in between. So he's doing some extra ones because you could kind of see where the beam didn't move at all. I'm not sure if those would have counted as extra shots. You've got to have at least one game for it, play frame in there. And then Kai is going to wait for uh, the drops to appear because otherwise, if you come up here to this door ahead of time, you don't really have any indicator on when those drops appeared. And of course, we don't want to leave Dragon behind. And if we leave the room early, it will not count the kill. So that is the microwave Dragon fight very fast. Yeah, no Dragons left behind. That's right. All right, now we're going to get the uh, bot to an E tank, and then we're going to head back. To, um, and then we're going to head to Aqueduct. That's where we go next. I know there's that meme of didn't even soft lock, but in this game, you really are not going to be able to soft lock because you can always shoot out these blocks if you get stuck. So a little, little improvement over the vanilla game, shall we say. And they didn't get everything perfect in the, in the uh, original. And we can also just screw attack up through this. Uh, we do the aqueduct in kind of a reverse order. We don't have to do the uh, that blue strat. Which, that blue strat, the, I can't even believe it at the moment, but that strat is a very nice strat. But we don't need it. And then this is kind of the awkward part of this routing is we can do this sand pit, but now we're going to have to go all back to Aqueduct and do the sand pits again. Um, it doesn't seem that whether it's Hundo or GT Max in Vanilla or GT Max in Open Doors, it seems to be the same issue with how to route these rooms. Uh, but one thing we don't have to do is Shock Tool. So uh, we were talking about this a little bit earlier in the run. The game, the way the game counts up uh, minor items is by how many you have. It looks at your mass, max capacity and just does the math off of your max capacity. But for the majors, it's just looking at do you have it or not. So since we already have Spring Ball, there is no benefit in going and collecting Spring Ball. And believe me, people have tried it. People have gone, they've, they've, they've tried leaving items behind and then collecting them later to see if it makes any difference. It makes absolutely no difference for the percentage. So that's why we're not going to be seeing Shock Tool today. We already have Spring Ball. And, and just in general, we didn't pick up the space jump either. We had that. Uh, we, we won't. We, we can skip most major techs. That's why it's so unusual to get that spacer beam uh, in a GT Max run. You don't really do that. Jeez, that was close. I think Kai knew what he was doing there, though. I think he knew that was going to work. Wouldn't have been the end of the world if we missed that spark, since you could just climb up um, and shoot out those blocks, but it would be slower. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and do uh, the beach items, kind of using the, this momentum to get across this room. It's actually one of the bigger parts of this of this uh, routing, the open doors. It's just, can you maintain your momentum? All right.
right, so we get this uh, hidden missiles back here, and then we get our two beach missiles up here. And then we'll head back for Sam Pitt's round two. Uh, missing that jump there. It's a little bit tight. I, I always like seeing that jump when it's successful. We're wiggling through here. It's a little bit of a tight gap. It's nice to fit through. By the way, um, after this run is done, don't go away. We've got plenty more uh, runs coming up. I believe the next run after this is Kill Croc's Sun with Major Glitches. That's uh, I, I kind of prefer the no Major Glitch version of the run, but I must admit that the Major Glitch run is going to be a little bit more entertaining for a showcase. So That'll be coming up here I think in about 45 to 50 minutes or so. But we've got plenty more open doors to go. We still have all the cleanup in wreck ship. We've got to finish up Meridia. Let's see here. After this, um, these items up here. Still helps to have spring ball here. Yep, still still using the spring ball. It's still a nice item to have for these uh, left sand pit items. And then after this, we still got to get Mama Turtle, and then we've got to get uh, Crab Soupers. And then we need to not forget about the Alpha and Beta Power Bomb items. It's definitely not something I would ever forget. I don't think there's any chance of making these doors wider, but it would be kind of nice. Like, it's like that jump right there. It's like, it would be kind of nice if these doors were a little wider just to make these cross uh, room strats where you've got the space jump and screw deck. Oops. There we go. We have to get one in the run. We got it. We got our unintentional door fall. Practically mandatory. All right, at least we can uh, charge up the science park really easily. Don't have to worry about timing the door shot or anything. Oh, interesting. Uh, Kai does not go for that spark up. It chooses to get the uh, missile pack first. Might have been intending to jump there. Um, it, it would have been probably a very late jump that you would want to do, so that makes sense. And then this crab super hole, I, 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 oh, that was, that was really, uh, game is kind of being picky there. That made me a little nervous too. Sometimes when you go too high on that wall, then you just fall right past the hole. So it's kind of a tricky balance there to land in that hole. I've, I've wondered if it's possible to spring wall jump over out of this, uh, this crab clear. It's probably not because you don't have the necessary speed, be my guess, but maybe you can. Be kind of cool if you could land on that bottom right there. Okay, and Kaizen two choosing, Kaizen ten choosing to uh, space jump up. You can shine spark up this too, um, which is cool, but it does tend to massacre the door. <laughs> Even though we have no doors, uh, we still have the door transitions, and you still want to fix them if you want to go fast. And it, 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 that's a really bad door when you when you mess it up. Another example, screw attack here, just flying through. I think you can shoot through this. Uh, these are just power bomb blocks here. Oh, I guess not. I guess the I guess the uh, statue. I would have thought you could shoot through that statue. It must be it's the wreck ship one. You can shoot through that.
And then we're going to head to Beta Power Bombs. Nothing to worry about here. Not only do we have a million health, but we don't even need to kill everything in this room. Just... See ya. Just, yeah, all those places you might use Power Bombs. Not really necessary. Ooh, and kept a lot of the platform there. That's convenient for running back out a little bit, get out a little bit faster. Yes, Screw just broke all those power bomb blocks. Yes. Uh, screw um, is kind of OP. So, not only can you shoot, like, basically any of the blocks that you can shoot, you can screw attack. The only exception being item, hidden item blocks. I'll talk more about that exception a little bit later. But for the most part, if you can shoot it, you can screw attack it. All right, and then wreck ship. Another another area that it's hard to say what's the fastest way to do this. Um, I personally like to just run and space jump through all the way to get to where the gravity items are. But uh, this is uh, what I've seen uh, Kai and also Metroid Gameplays have been doing this. Uh, Metroid Gameplays is the other one running this. Actually, currently has the the record in this category with a one thirteen forty seven. I believe you just got that today. And then choosing to jump up like this to get to these items here. So we're just gonna we don't no need to go through bowling. We can we can just backdoor this. We don't have to sit through that cutscene. And then we've got a tricky optimization here. This part's pretty similar to vanilla, just missing through. Although as far as in vanilla, maybe you'd use the robot flush, the opportunity to do that in this category. And then you can speed boost up, or you can jump through all the crumble blocks. We'll see what Kai chooses to do. You cannot shine spark through the crumble blocks. Maybe that'd be a good thing to change in the future. I'm not sure. Uh, Kai chooses to do it the normal way. I think it's a touch faster to try to jump through here. But it is tricky with those spikes up there, especially. And it's hard to even remember where you're supposed to jump in that room. So one of those things that could be optimized if this if this runs really pushed. All right, so we've got the main street missile, main, main shaft missiles. We've got left side rec uh, supers, right side supers, and we've got wreckship key tank. It's hard to say which is best to get first or last. Or maybe it's hard for me to say. I feel like my route's not as good as this guy's route or, or as much for gameplays. Ooh, that was nice. Some nice debuts there. I'm going to have to steal that. And a nice mock ball through here as well. No, it doesn't seem like there's a way to kill that block. Sorry, I clicked the wrong button there. Lost my feet for a moment. All right, so uh, coming through this room here. Normally a dangerous room, but we have an obscene amount of health, so it's not dangerous at all. One of the nice things about this uh, category is once you get that GT, really any GT code category, once you get the code, it's smooth sailing from there. There's a few gotchas you got to worry about. The main one being stand up in regular GT Classic. That is one that gets a lot of newer runners. Um, but even then, we don't. We have so much health. We probably don't have to worry about that one either. Uh, yeah. The qu the question about why doesn't Rex start awake? It, it, just, it really just didn't have to change. Is really what it was. 
And also, I kind of didn't like the idea that you could just run over your gravity immediately. I, I didn't... Because it's supposed to be kind of open and choose different routes, and being able to pick up the vanilla gravity suit like as your first item, potentially, um, because I think that you could get it as your first item. Uh, it would be your second item. You, you would you would pick up the boat missiles, and then you'd get uh, gravity's your second item. That just didn't seem right to me. Um, but Zeb is a way kind of had to change because he had no great wars. Uh, Fantoon's flag. So we already killed Fantoon. That's why um, we already woke up the ship before the GT code. I'm, I'm trying to think of why you would need more. Maybe you do, but what would you... Because you just... If you go right from the ship... Like, I think none of those rooms would need more to get to where gravity is. Yeah, unless you wanted to skip... Unless you... Well, you couldn't make gravity your first item. You, you need something. So in this run, in this run, we uh, we do, uh, yeah. So you could just go in the back door of gravity. Uh, <laughs> could you could you soft lock on a failed CWJ without warp? Um, yes, you would. <laughs> Maybe I should change that. I I really don't want there to be ways to soft lock. But that's actually a good one I haven't thought of. All right, so this uh, next section here, I had been theorizing just yesterday, wouldn't it be neat if we could just run through landing site and go straight into Grawlet, like just so we'd save Criteric Power Bombs for later? And that is possible with a couple of uh, near full jumps here. Kai's like, why stop there? Why not just save Gauntlet for later? Just do all of that later. So. This is a new route as of just yesterday. Uh, we're just going to head down and do the green Bren thing up in an opposite order that you normally do. We're just going to start with the 230 missiles here. And we'll get all that other stuff later. I, I don't know if it's actually faster. I'm not sure Kai knows if it's actually faster, but it is more interesting. It might be faster. Uh, question about question about is gravity there without killing Fantu? No, it's not because the ship the the wreck ship is not uh, awake, and I I just didn't want to change that, and I didn't have to change it, so I didn't. <laughs> Another thing I didn't have to change and didn't change was Turian being open can actually go left um if kai wanted to he, he, he's not going to but if he wanted to he could just hang a left here and and uh head into turian uh or sorry not turian uh, yeah it would be the escape head into the escape you could get to those four rooms but you can't get to mother brain although it used to be kind of in an earlier pre-release version of this it used to be if you got all the way to the first room just being in the first room triggers the escape and then you could just leave the planet uh after playing the game for like 10 minutes <laughs> was uh, not intended and uh, has been touched. So one thing we got to remember here as we do our, our retro burn cleanup, we got to get those alpha missiles. Normally would not be able to, normally would not be picking those up. Um, I like to get them right away. I noticed Kai likes to get them later. I would be worried about forgetting them personally. Kai's done this route a few more times than I have, so more confident. Kai doing the traditional kind of weave up that up that uh, shaft, which you need to do in vanilla in order to get Screw Attack to trigger. However, in this game, Screw Attack is OP. It will trigger right out of a wall jump. Uh, again, just that vanilla, uh, just the for the casual gameplay, you know, just like oh, I could use screw attack to go up this, these uh, purple block shaft, and then to have the screw attack kind of give out on you because of the fact that on the first few frames after a wall jump, it's not active right away, just didn't feel right. So, 
Uh, did we lose the feed here? So like um, I've I've got a frozen screen here on the missile here. Uh, let me go check and see if I can find Kaizen Tunes feed directly. I probably should have had that open anyway. Uh, so Kaizen Tune is still going. Um, the stream is still up and running. And he has collected the Alpha missile. Uh, presumably, he's also collected the uh, the other missile pack that was over in Retrobrin. So, typical Twitch, being Twitch thing here would be my guess. Oh, it looks like we're back. All right, cool. We've got the... Uh, Got our power bombs, and we need to make sure we remember Green Hill Zone missiles. So many things you can forget in this game. Uh, the the Open Doors hack does have a verification feature. So if anybody's seen a relatively recent uh, true completion run of the vanilla game, where or like map completion, where the game actually tells you if you've completed it successfully or not upon finishing. That's built into the Open Doors hack. And it's also been extended to check for 138%. So we will know almost right away if we have com collected all of the items or not. Um, it's a double-edged sword. I remember doing a run and not getting that notification and thinking, oh, I missed something. And then like five seconds later, I remember what I missed. I felt good about myself for remembering it. And then Five minutes later, credits finish, and it's 136%, and I was a little sad. Uh, so, kind of a double-edged sword having that notification, because it, it did not tell me that. It doesn't tell you if you miss it by how much or anything. It's just, yeah, they got the 138 or you didn't. It's just doing this cleanup in the reverse order. We don't have to do any fancy setup for that super block. It's just a regular shot block. You could go go visit Sports Bond from this direction if you wanted to. I don't recommend it. It's a little bit uh, interesting visiting Sports Bond from the back that way. Game doesn't really like you doing that. Yeah, exactly. That's the spirit. I'm collecting yet another energy tank. So another reason that this late outlet collection might be um, a little bit more viable is because it's actually a hindrance as we get, oh, that's nice. Just run through that way to come up here. It's a nice little routing trick there. It's actually a hindrance later in the game in Turian having all this health. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit more later as we get to those ports of Turian, but by putting off two energy tanks, um, Gauntlet and also Terminator until after the very end, after we've already defeated Mother Brain, we're actually saving a little bit of time on like the Mother Brain cutscenes and stuff. So we had the absolutely free Mission Impossible. It's Mission Very Possible now. Uh, now, with a well timed run up, if you get your blue at just the right time, yeah, that very nicely done. Very nicely done there. Getting the blue just as you reach those bomb blocks, but after you've crossed over the Decora speed blocks. And then you're going to do this in the opposite order as well. Uh, you could do this kind of in any order. Whichever order you choose, it's pretty common to use the little tunnel that's down below. So we're going to see that here. So you can take the tunnel in this direction. You can also take it in the other direction. Again, probably one of those things that's like frames different if you really optimized it. So kind of a pick your pick, take your choice. All right, and we just have 
the early supers room. That's one of our last rooms that we need to clean up. And then we'll be off to Turian. Do have five items to collect here. Five more fanfares. I like to sneak up here. Yep. I'm going to see Kai do the same thing. Just grab, just sneak up, grab this little super missile here, and then come back down. Kind of take advantage of the screw attack being so overpowered. Final reserve tank. Final, but wait, there's more item. <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunately, jumping through one tile gaps has not gotten any easier in open doors. <laughs> no need for the reverse mock ball. Uh, how come Kai is not on the leaderboard? He is on some. He might be on some leaderboards. Could be a choice. Um, I know Kai really likes to do. Uh, he would be on the suit list. He probably is on the ninety-eight percent suit list board. I'd be surprised if he's not. Um, so it might just be the the kind of uh, leaderboard that he's on. I, I don't think some runners just don't prefer to run any percent, and so they run other things, or they do randomizers, or they do like map rando. It's another thing I haven't talked about. There's a whole randomizer scene. Um, you know, there's the traditional like Varia type randomizer, and um, but there's also like th there's a bunch of different options, <laughs> a bunch of different ways to play. You really can't exhaust the number of different ways there is to play this game. Thirty years, and we're far from done. Uh, Kai did not do Gauntlet. We are saving Gauntlet to the end. So normally we would not be able to do that. You'd have all those gray doors blocking you completing the escape. Although that's technically not true. You can. There are methods of using a major glitch to get out of bounds to, to escape and collect more items during the escape. Uh, in fact, one of my favorite... Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit here. I, I want to focus on these Metroid rooms here. You know, we finally... We've got 52 supers. Finally a reason to use those supers. we got Metroids. Yeah, you know, we got to group them together, right? Let's jump through. All right, we're going to... Oh, well, I, I guess we don't need to kill the Metroids. Oh, sorry, Metroids. Oops. Still don't need a reason for those supers yet. One of my favorite runs... It's not even a category, I don't think. It's uh, Sustrain's Ridley Kill. So, Sustrain, one of... Uh, one of uh, one of our favorite speedrunners, really. Um, he he did a route where he broke into G4 early without having killed Ridley yet, and then he does the Turian, and then he breaks out of the escape, you know, using some major glitches and stuff like door door skips and stuff, or door climbs, X-ray climbs out of doors, and then he uh, ran as fast as he could down to Lower North Bear to Ridley with the Hyper Beam, and killed Ridley with the Hyper Beam. It's just a beautiful run. Um, and he actually runs out of time during, like, Ridley's grabbing him, and and as that cutscene's happening, time expires, the screen flashes white. It's it's really a, a beautiful run. It's, not, it's, just a, it's just a showcase, kind of like this one. Just, like, here's something we can do in this game if we want to. Oh, and Kai ran down his reserves, it looks like. Okay, so he's going to just uh, go ahead and refill health here. That's smart. That's a good idea. So Kai doesn't really go for the baby skips. Another one of those any percent things that just not something that 
Some runners love to focus on tricks like that, and others just like whatever, get, get me to the suit with some prettier stuff. That's what I'm interested in, you know. Um, you cannot spark to the. Actually, can you? I don't know. Actually, you might be able to spark to those. Um, you might be able to spark to those uh, uh, webs. You can't do it early though. The camera is still locked, so you just run into the screen. Like the, <laughs> the camera just blocks you from going further. Um, so you'd have to time your shine spark. And you'd also have to have one. Like, there's, I, just, I don't know how you would charge one up in that level of the space. You'd need to bring a spike suit with you. But normally, um, if you go for that type of skip, you charge a shot, and then you fire a shot. You can actually shoot out all the webs, so you don't have to spark through the webs. But I wonder if that would work because they are shot. If they're shot blocks, I bet you could spark through. Them. That's not something I've tried. Not even with the practice hack, be a good idea to do. But there is a practice hack for this game now as well. I'm gonna try out some of this stuff. Alright, sorry, I was kinda sidetracked there, uh, skipping over the, the Zeppa types uh, killed. We finally had a reason to use, use all those supers. Um, oh, look, I didn't even notice. Kai, Kai turned uh, Ice Beam back on. Make this fight go a little bit faster. Although, again, I would it have made more sense to just keep ice on the whole time? Probably. Eh, it doesn't make a big difference. Oh. Whoa, this is, this is not, what are you, uh, okay. Oh, Kai's making me nervous here. I think he's okay. Because he turned off Vario. I just, I do not, I'm just so preconditioned to you you uh, get hit with the first rainbow beam. You get up off the ground as soon as you can and you damage down. Because if you're over like 400 health or so, you've got to damage down more. Or else you're going to get hit with the rainbow beam again. And then you won't be able to do the stand-up glitch. But I'm just not used to seeing that way of doing it. So I was like a little freaking out a little bit in my head. Like, he's not going to... He's going to get double rainbow beam. Oh, he's going to have to pull out the x-ray. Okay, there we go. See... Uh, nice of Kai to shut it up for us. So in in these 100% type categories, we have X-Ray. If you accidentally are at the ground at the wrong time, you get crouch locked. I have no idea why there's only two frames if the game does that. Why would there be a second one? Wouldn't you already be on the floor? Did the developers know that you could get in this situation? And they're trying to like prevent you from getting stuck? I don't know. <laughs> but with X-Ray, you can get out of that situation. And then here's an interesting thing. The Metroid's dead. You can see Mother Brain's only firing one, one little onion ring at a time. We're actually waiting for Samus to get up to full health. So having all those E tanks um, actually kind of annoying, slowing us down a little bit. And that's why saving two E tanks till the end actually saves a little bit of time on this part. And it also would have saved time earlier when uh, we were damaging down for the baby skip. If you if you don't get the baby skip, that's another place I can save time. Yeah, I don't know what that little pixel is there. I think that's in the vanilla game. I hope so. If not, I need to go fix that. I was just showing that to me today. Okay, thanks, Annie. All right, and into the escape. If you shine spark there, you actually go through the door, and that's a little bit annoying. So that's one reason why Kai choosing to do the screw attack jump up. This is the moonfall there, no big deal. It's only a couple seconds. It's it's faster than like freaking out and like trying to go do it again. I right, need to make sure you don't run out of the room, or you just do the uh, the BD spark. That's nice. And here we go. Don't go to the ship yet. We have more to do. We saved it to the end. This is kind of the tricky part here. Can you get some good run speed here? Okay, we do. Good. 
Sometimes you get a little bit trolled there with that steam. Uh, these doors were open for us, and the explosions and stuff don't really follow us into these rooms generally. It's kind of a funny thing. The timer keeps running, but there's... And if the timer expires, it will it will trigger. <laughs> you have only that amount of time. Um, if you do take a save, if you were to save out here, like go to a save station and then reload, the escape flag is still set, but the timer is not set anymore. So that's one way to get rid of the timer. Yeah, I like how the music changes too. And um, even when we go back to the final room, it's not the normal music. Like for some reason, the music triggers aren't set up uh, for that landing site room. Just a few more items to go. Oops, we went down the run side. Darn it. We gotta go all the way around. That joke's not gonna work anymore. You guys already know better. It is more than 100% because we used the GT code. Uh, I can explain that if you're not familiar with it, but it, um, it basically gives us a whole bunch of items that aren't in the game. It gives us 100 missiles without us having collected any missile packs. So then those 100 missiles are still in the game. And you can end up with, what would that be, 330 missiles instead of 230? Who has a nice little speedball here to end us out on? Really nice. Look at that. Well done, Kaizenton. GG. And there it is, the confirmation 138 right up there next to the time, uh, next to the minimap there is the confirmation that we've received. That we collected all 138%. Gosh, that speedball alone makes you think that route's faster. That's, that's a little biased, but that definitely that was uh, pretty smooth there. All right, and I think we're going to start setting up for the next run here pretty soon. Um, the credits are pretty similar to, you know, the, the credits aren't really any different for this half act, except for this part right here. The operation was GT Max Completion, so we do get a little bit of uh, bonus text if you complete one of the objectives, whether it's True Completion or Map Completion or Suitless True Completion. All right, well, that's going to wrap up this presentation of the Open Doors Half Hack. Um, appreciate Zenny putting this on, putting this whole showcase on. Really great job. That's been really well run. And it's nice to see all these different runs and ideas being presented. In fact, the next one, um, if you're more interested in some major glitches, stay tuned. Next run, Kill Croc's Tongue with Major Glitches. Um, stay tuned. <laughs>